Uh, well, next is our request. And honestly, I'm, <laughs> I'm very excited <laughs> for this request. Uh, I saw it on the poll ages ago, and um, I've, I've just been hoping that it would, it would maintain its high score on our poll, and thankfully it did. Uh, Matt Deniman's Dungeon Crawler Carl. So uh, I've actually been wanting to work with Matt Deniman for a long time. He does a lot of gross-out stuff. And I think that's going to be perfect for audio. Um, it's oh yeah. Oh wow, look at this it. is this is a very interesting this book cover. cover. <laughs> uh, <design>. um. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if if there's any uh, if there's anyone who hasn't heard of this yet, check out the Royal Road link in the description in the YouTube in the YouTube description. Um, it, I think he's already working on book three, oh. but book one hasn't even been released on amazon yet so he has he has it up for <laughs> i love this cover fork? i love it uh he, he has he has um he has it up for pre-order i believe it's it's releasing october 1st or 2nd so go check out the royal road link if you guys like how things are going in the royal road version so far go to amazon and uh pre-order it because it's coming soon. So, um, Dungeon Crawler Carl, let's take a look at this script, and we'll start casting here. Uh, okay. wait a I thought I opened here. It is all right. So, um, I think the description's up here. Yes, here it is. All right. So, POV MC Carl. I'll go ahead and take that. Twenty-seven-year-old man, Coast Guard vet, burly, tough guy, in way over his head. So I've always wanted an excuse to narrate using my best Patrick Warburton impersonation. Oh, so nice. I think that's what I'm going to do for this one. All right, then. All right. Uh, we have Donut, which is Carl's ex-girlfriend's award-winning Persian cat. She entered the world dungeon at the same time as Carl and has been given. If you cast anybody eight. but me as Donut, I'm gonna be pissed. Oh no, it's not happening. It's not. Happening. You're you're definitely Donut. Uh, okay. She entered the world dungeon at the same time as Carl and has been given intelligence and is treated as a contestant by the system AI, posh and spoiled. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Uh, so the system AI. I think this one goes to Justin. Well, oh no, you and Gary should fight uh, about which which of you takes which role here. So we have the system AI, an over-the-top monster trunk, a monster truck rally game show host voice. Oh my god! And I then, hear Gary the, do that. and then the juicer is a former steroid abusing weightlifter magically combined with a troglodyte basher. Oh Call my god. What is wait, what is a troglodyte a troglodyte basher? Is okay, uh, uh Ahmed, can you bring up that picture of the of the lizard thing? A troglodyte. Oh, that's a troglodyte. Okay. I've seen troglodytes before, I guess. It is like a lizard like monster. I think it's different in different games. Okay, and it, it like it, it bashes I'll, them. I'll put it in the Discord real quick. Okay. And then, what do we got uh, here? Dungeon. Uh, 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 okay. Well, I can just imagine that a troglodyte is like a big monster, and then a troglodyte. Well, it's back. it's cool. We have it. We have a we have an illustration. It's it's a. Oh, there we go. It's nice. Oh, cool. Hold on. Level four. Yeah. Ahmed, can you put that up? Okay. okay I wonder so if he's gonna do. I wonder if he's gonna do cards like this for all the characters. So we've got. Uh, uh, um a bodybuilding troglodyte basher yeah the system ai and who was the the other one the radio uh, announcer right the, so that's a monster trunk monster truck rally announcer and that's the ai oh yeah i see okay so well, which one, uh, how who, are you who wants, troglodyte, who wants the monster truck rally oh we can't hear you we can't hear you i want the troglodyte heard... basher you want the truck that I basher? Yeah, you okay. wanted him. I did want him, but this other guy's gonna be fun too. I think they're both kind of equally fun, so I'm good for either. Oh, so, yeah, you know what? Right. Oh, actually, actually, I take it back. You were talking while while I was muted. I've got a plan for the monster truck. Okay, you great. sure? I don't mind. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. 
Cool. So I'm steroid abuser, bodybuilder, lizard smasher. Okay. So we'll cool. we'll see the picture of the troglodyte here pretty soon. Oh, here we go. It's coming up. Okay. So this is this is uh, Art. uh Gary, this is your character. Art. Art. Shit. There we Art. go. Ah, it works. Third time's a charm. Is that me or is that the thing I bash? That's you. So the, oh, that's me. <laughs> no, he's saying like he's a troglodyte who is a basher. Aww. Oh, not a, he doesn't so, bash troglodytes. All right, you troglodytes. He's like a big lizard and he, <laughs> he bashes <laughs> things. I, I love the subtitle here. About as intelligent as an oft dropped toddler. <laughs> I like it. It's oft. Oft dropped. Yes. So uh, yeah, are you guys ready to to go with this? I hope he has like trading cards for all the characters in this series. That'll be amazing. I'm ready to go. Yeah. All right. Gary's ready. Annie, you ready? I'm ready. All right. A loud, deep grunting filled the gym, followed by the familiar ching of metal weights crashing together. A level two troglodyte hissed at us from the counter, and Donut jumped to my shoulder and slammed him with a magic missile. He fell over, dead. The automatic door slammed shut behind us, and the well-lit room turned red. The familiar music started to play as I pushed my way through the turnstile. The boss battle message blared, almost identical to last time. Our mugshots floated into the air, and we were announced as we rounded the corner. Six of the level three troglodyte bashers filled the room, working the machines. A trio of the virtuosos stood in the opposite corner. And then there was the boss. The monstrosity stood across the room, admiring himself in the mirror as he curled a pair of absurdly large dumbbells. The creature stopped when we entered the room. He dropped the weights. The pair embedded themselves halfway into the floor with a reverberating crash. Wood splintered up all around where they fell. The beast slowly turned in our direction, and the world paused the moment his eyes met mine. Ah, fuck, I thought, as the face of the creature zoomed big on my interface. This is the Juicer! Level 9 Neighborhood Boss! With a body enhanced by the finest anabolic steroids the dark web has to offer, the juicer spends his days pushing iron, snapping necks, and crying that his pimple-infested sack is a third the size it once was. Having reached a plateau, rage now fills his enlarged heart. All he ever wanted was to gain! But right now, he'll settle on bringing out... The music hit a crescendo with a dun-dun-dun! The pain! <laughs> the cheese factor of some of these descriptions is just horrifying. Donut muttered. It's worse than the Knight Rider show you love so much. Once again, this creature was a person from our world, though without the description it wouldn't be quite as obvious. It was like they'd taken a troglodyte basher and merged it with a contestant from a bodybuilding contest, and then inflated his muscles well past what a normal body could sustain. He was a couple inches, inches taller than me. He still had the lizard head and a scaled body and tail. He wore little black shorts and nothing else, revealing a preposterously muscled physique covered in tributaries of bulging veins as thick as my finger. The thing was so shredded, he was like a kid in a snowsuit who couldn't put his arms down. His trap muscles made him look as if he had tumors sprouting from the edge of his shoulder to halfway up his scaled head. His thighs <laughs> were the size of beer kegs, forcing him into a ridiculous wide stance. This is good. <laughs> he waddled when he moved. <laughs> Bro! The monstrosity... <laughs> I'm a spot, bro! 
Oh, sorry. I did not expect that voice. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled a round, metallic, free weight from a, from a rack. The disc was the size of a manhole cover. With a twist of his waist, he threw it right at my head. The giant weight burst into flames as it rocketed toward me. Holy fuck! I cried as I jumped out of the way. Donut leaped in the other direction. The weight crashed into a treadmill and exploded, shattering the mirror behind it. I activated my scroll of confusing fog as the other troglodytes descended on me. The effect was immediate. A thick, wet fog filled the room, temporarily blinding me before it faded before my eyes. Water beaded over everything, making the ground slick. I could still see the outline of the cloud in the room, but the opacity of the effect was halved. I knew the troglodytes couldn't see a thing. The scroll didn't say how long the effect lasted, but I suspected it wasn't long. We had to act fast. The troglodytes, blinded, started running into each other in the scattered gym equipment. <laughs> <laughs> the juicer picked up another weight and chucked it at a random direction. He groaned. Bro, I can't see! I rushed toward the group of bashers as yet another weight crashed against the squat rack, knocking it on its side with a mighty clang. We decided ahead of time that I'd take out the support creatures first if I could, while Donut dealt full-strength headshots to the boss. I leaped over a glute machine, punching down into the wide-eyed, confused face of a basher. <laughs> These guys took at least four or five punches to stay down. My fist burned as I tore through them. I swept the leg out of the final basher, and he tumbled, hitting his head on the padded chair of a chest press. As I caved in the side of his head with my fist, the fog cleared, just as quickly as it had come. Damn it. I read my second scroll as I scrambled away from a flaming disc. It smashed into the same chest press, sending flaming hunks of metal in every direction like shrapnel. I cried out as my exposed hip exploded in pain. Blood geysered down my leg. I cast my heel spell just as the fog refilled the chamber. The confusing fog had lasted barely 15 or 20 seconds, and I only had one scroll left. Donut bounced back and forth around the room. Launching at the juicer, who was content, who was content to stay where he was and hurl metal at us. The powerful magic Ow. missiles were having an obvious effect on the boss monster, but his health bar was still in the green by the time Donut had to, had to drink a mana potion. The juicer grunted every time the muscles hit his head, followed by a bellow of rage. He picked up another weight and tossed it in Donut's general direction. He was smart enough to move after each blast. The weights flew through the mist like comets. In addition to avoiding to avoid in addition to avoiding the attacks by the boss, Donut had to dodge the random tongue lashes from the virtuosos. She tried to keep a machine between herself and the poison dealing monsters. Only I had the anti poison resistance, and if she got hit, we'd have a hard time keeping her alive until she'd be allowed to drink an antidote potion. Both my leg and my hand healed as I launched myself toward the other side of the room of the three virtuosos. One blindly shot his tongue and it smashed into a chin-up bar machine next to me. I grasped the tongue with my left hand before it could recede, and the lizard made a strangled cry as it tried to retract, but found he couldn't. He retracted anyway, getting dragged across the room toward me. His large mouth clamped down on my fist. Oh, fuck! I cried out in pain. I banged the head against the side of a machine, but the body remained firmly attached. Its dozens of sharp teeth were embedded in the bones of my arm. The virtuoso wasn't dead, but he was literally choking on my fist. He seemed just as desperate to get free of me as I was. His body weighed barely anything, and it flayed desperately as it dangled off my arm. I reached the other two lizards just as the fog began to clear again. I'm almost out! Donut cried behind me. I snap kicked one in the stomach, and he doubled over. I smashed down with my foot, breaking his neck as I whirled on the third, hitting him with a right cross. 
I took my left fist, which was still inside the mouth of the first troglodyte, and I pummeled the third to death. The lizard affixed to me also died during the beating, and his body broke off at the neck with a disgusting snap. The teeth remained painfully attached to my left wrist like I was wearing a bizarre boxing glove made of troglodyte head. Bits of gore and bone still hung from the neck hole. I whirled to face the boss. The juicer's health was about two-thirds gone. The entire top half of his body was blackened and scorched. I could no longer see his beady eyes glaring at me. Bro! He said. Not cool. That was my bro! He picked up another weight and hurled it at me. I dove out of the way. It hit the wall, shattering. Shrapnel cut into me. Burning little pieces of metal peppered the side of my head. I fell backward over another machine, my ankle getting caught in the wire. I read my final scroll of confusing fog as I extracted myself. Another weight rocketed toward me, whirring over my head like a buzzsaw. It exploded behind me. More metal chunks cut into me. My health plummeted into the red. I mentally clicked a health potion from my hot list as I peeled the skull off my wrist. It was like trying to free a boiled egg from its shell. I had to break the head from the jaw to free my hand. The skull clattered to the ground. The fog filled the room, and I rushed at the boss. This is a terrible idea, I thought, as I approached from behind. The monster was bent over, feeling blindly for another weight from the wreck. He pulled all the weights off with one pole, but there were more right below it. Blinded, he couldn't see what to grab. I grasped at a barbell that appeared to have about 250 pounds on each side. I grasped the stop and ripped half the weights free, which clattered to the ground near my feet. I held onto the barbell before it could tumble t- forward off the bench. I brandished the lopsided makeshift weapon like a giant mace. Before lift, before lifting 250 pounds plus the bar would be next to impossible. I normally benched 230 pounds, which was a respectable amount. With my strength now at nine, I could still feel the weight, but I lifted it easily. It was enough to be awkward, maybe too much to just regularly walk around with, but I knew I could easily swing it, and I did, as hard as I could, at the monster's scaly head. Crash! My whole body shuddered, as if I'd swung at a solid wall. The boss staggered, falling on his side, dropping the weight he'd managed to pull free. The bar trembled, and the three weights fell off the far end. I smacked him one more time with the much lighter bar, then tossed it. I picked up one of the 100-pound weights at my feet, lifted it over my head in both hands, and smashed down on the juicer. I smashed, and I smashed. His health bar slowly descended as he cried out. Stop! Ow! No, bro! It hurts! Just when I thought he was done, about to die, he twisted. His giant arm shot up, fast as a snake strike, and it grasped my wrist. It felt as if a steel shackle had wrapped around me. Oh, fuck, I thought as I dropped the bloody, dripping weight, which bounced off the monstrosity's stomach. He took his other hand and grasped my neck. This is gonna hella burn, he said, sitting up. The fog cleared, and his eyes focused on me. Despite being lizard-faced, a row of pustules circled his eyes, like zits that had grown up through the scales. He stank of sweat and burned flesh and axe body spray. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. (laughs) He started to squeeze, and I knew I was dead. My health bar plummeted. A magic missile slammed into the juicer's back. This was a weak one, and the monster barely acknowledged it with a grunt. Hold on, Carol! Donut cried. She emerged, flying through the air, claws out like a tiger pouncing on unsuspecting prey. She landed directly on the monster's massive, bulbous shoulder, and she bit down hard on his vein-covered neck as her rear legs scrabbled at his back. Tendrils of green and red tissue went flying, as if she was the potato peeler gone haywire. She bit through one of the veins on his neck, vampire-like. Blood sprayed as if she had struck oil, soaking Donut, who gurgled in response. (laughs) 
I'm not sure that's what he meant, but okay. The giant hand at my neck went slack, and he slapped backward at Donut. He barely hit her, a glancing blow, but she rocketed off the creature's back as if she'd been shot out of a cannon. She hit the far wall with a sickening crunch. Donut! I cried. I scrambled to my feet, wheezing for breath as the monster reached for his shredded back in obvious agonizing pain. Blood sprayed from his neck as if she'd sheared off a water spigot. The blood just kept coming and coming, an impossible amount. The juicer looked at me, I surprised, as if he hadn't realized I was still alive. I'm proud of you, bro, he said. You fought through the pain. No homo. I hit him with a weak jab, and that's all it took. The boss, whose health was already all but depleted, crumpled onto his back. I smashed his solid head with my foot. The system seemed to release whatever supernatural protection it gave to bones and flesh once the creature was dead, and his head caved in easily under my heel. It felt as if I'd stepped out into a rotten watermelon. I didn't pause to look at the carnage. I rushed across the room toward Donut. She lay in a bloodied heap on the floor, her leg bent in the wrong direction. Her health bar held nothing but the barest sliver of red. Donut, I cried, coming to my knees before her. God damn it, Donut, don't you do this to me. She gasped, not dead. The cat was entirely soaked in blood, but she was alive. I worriedly watched her health, terrified it might go lower. Sometimes when you were injured, it continued to decrease, just like on the surface. The winner! Graphic appeared on my screen, and the music stopped as I plunged into my inventory. I had to wait ten frustrating seconds for the bullshit to clear before I could find what I was searching for. I had a scroll of Heel Critter. I read it, but it didn't work on her. The scroll evaporated from my menu with an error message. No valid target available! You just wasted a valuable scroll, dumbass! God damn it, I growled. I leaned over Donut, rubbing her soft fur. Stay with me, I said. Crack! The cat murmured in pain as her broken leg magically set itself. The sliver of health grew longer. She was healing, getting better. She'd be okay. I sighed, relief washing over me. She would heal on her own, but it was going to take a while. Carl, is that you? Donut asked after a minute, lifting her head pitifully. Did we get it? We got it, Donut. You got it. Don't move. Just rest for a minute. You saved my life. I have been grievously injured in battle, she said. In saving you, I have made the ultimate sacrifice. I can feel my life fading away, Carol. I'm circling the last bend into the drain. If this is the end, I used my claws, like you said, and I have perished as a result. Miss Beatrice is going to be the most displeased with you. She coughed twice. <coughs> Two coughs that sounded suspiciously fake. Tell her I fought bravely. Tell her I, I fought to the end. Find Ferdinand. Tell him I loved him. I loved him ever since I first saw him. Her health suddenly rocketed back up on its own. She'd taken one of her own health potions. I sighed, relieved. The light! I think I see the light. She croaked as I sat back and crossed my arms. Her eyes were clenched shut and mock pain. This mortal coil is shed! Oh, get up, I said, looking about the room. Help me loot all this crap. Guys, that was so much fun. I want to do this, but... That's amazing. Dude, that, uh, that Warburton um, narration style really worked with it. Didn't it? Didn't it? I knew yeah. it. I knew it would. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay. So, Justin, you are echoey as fuck. Oh, that's right. Yes, I was. Uh... Oh, here we go. 
Hey, there we go. That should be better. There we are. You that were, was my. Were, uh, oh wow! Look at you can't see me. No, you are. You are black as the ace of spades. There we go. Oh, it's still very dark. I'm now just in silhouette. Yes. Uh, let me see if I can uh, see if I can fix that. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm no stranger to cat fighting sounds, Facebook user. I'm and, no stranger uh, to cat fighting sounds. Gary Simmons sounds. says that I will. My you my claws will take your soul, so? and that I will learn one song to sing perfectly from memory for each soul, which is the truth. Yeah. So, if I take your soul, worry not. I will also be learning a song just for you. Hmm. To usher us into. Is it like, it's the afterlife, but it's like your own little afterlife? Yes. That you kind of gather us into? It's going to be a little kitty party with lots and lots of songs and souls. <laughs> Sounds better than COVID. hey -oh! Indeed. Ooh, okay. Indeed. Uh, so, um, thanks again, Matt Denneman, for requesting that one. Um, I'm really excited. Hopefully, like, it gets requested again, and we'll, we'll, we'll do it again. But uh, remember, guys, if you want to hear us do something, if you want to request something for the poll, that's right. Go check out the link below, um, and you can go to our Facebook group, and you can find our poll and vote on that. Either, either nominate something yourself in the comments or vote on what's on the poll, obviously. 